I had been searching for a new laptop for weeks when I stumbled upon what appeared to be a perfect deal on Facebook Marketplace. The seller claimed to offer a brand new, top-of-the-line laptop at an unbelievably low price. My excitement grew as I messaged them, and they responded promptly, eager to arrange a meeting. We agreed to meet in a quiet parking lot during daylight hours for the exchange. When I arrived, I noticed a person waiting by their car, holding a sleek laptop box. The seller introduced themselves as Alex, who seemed friendly and approachable. They even offered to show me the laptop's features, turning it on and demonstrating its capabilities. Everything appeared legitimate, and I was convinced that this was indeed the deal of a lifetime. I handed over the cash with a sense of triumph and left the parking lot, eager to start using my new laptop. However, my elation quickly turned to horror when I got home and opened the package. Inside the box was not a laptop, but a stack of old magazines, cleverly placed to mimic the weight and size of the real deal. I had been scammed, and the seller, Alex, had vanished without a trace. My heart sank, and I felt a rush of anger and betrayal. I reported the incident to Facebook, but the chances of tracking down the scammer were slim. The experience left me both financially and emotionally scarred, serving as a harsh reminder that even on seemingly reputable platforms, scammers can prey on unsuspecting buyers. It was a lesson learned the hard way, making me far more cautious when making online transactions. My wife and I had recently moved into a charming old house and were in the process of furnishing it. We decided to explore Facebook Marketplace for unique and affordable furniture pieces. That's when we came across a listing that would forever change our lives. A beautiful antique dresser that seemed like the perfect addition to our home. In addition to our bedroom, the seller, Emily, had posted several pictures showcasing the dresser's intricate details and undeniable charm. We exchanged messages and agreed to visit her house to take a closer look at the piece. Upon our arrival, Emily welcomed us warmly and led us to the dresser, which was even more stunning in person. It was love at first sight, and we couldn't believe our luck in finding such a treasure. We paid Emily, thanked her, and carefully loaded the dresser into our truck. The drive home was filled with excitement and anticipation. Little did we know that our joy would soon turn to terror. That night, as we settled into our bedroom, we were awakened by strange noises coming from the direction of the new dresser. Whispers, footsteps, and eerie creaks filled the room, and a cold chill hung in the air. It felt as though the dresser was possessed, and we couldn't rationalize the paranormal activity we were experiencing night after night. The disturbances continued, leaving us sleep-deprived and frightened. We considered the possibility of a haunted piece of furniture, a notion that seemed absurd at first. Desperate for answers, we contacted Emily, hoping to learn more about the dresser's history. Her response sent shivers down our spines. She explained that she had inherited the dresser from her grandmother, who had always claimed it was haunted. Emily, unable to bear its eerie presence any longer, had decided to part with it. She warned us that the paranormal occurrences were likely linked to the dresser, and that we should proceed with caution. Terrified, we made the difficult decision to sell the haunted dresser on Facebook Marketplace, hoping that someone else might have the courage to take it off our hands. The memory of those restless nights and the inexplicable paranormal activity still haunts us, serving as a chilling reminder that sometimes the boundaries between the ordinary and 
the supernatural can blur in the most unexpected ways. I had recently relocated to a new city for a job and was eager to settle into my new apartment. Furnishing my place was a top priority, so I turned to Facebook Marketplace to find affordable and stylish pieces. That's when I came across a listing for a vintage couch that seemed perfect for my living room. The seller, David, had posted several pictures showcasing the couch's unique design and excellent condition. We exchanged messages and agreed to meet at his apartment to complete the transaction. When I arrived at his building, David was friendly and welcoming. He helped me load the couch into my vehicle, and everything seemed to be going smoothly. However, shortly after the transaction, I began noticing strange behavior from David. He started following me on social media and would frequently like and comment on all my posts, often with overly personal and invasive messages. At first, I brushed it off as over-enthusiastic friendliness, but it quickly escalated. David began sending me unsolicited messages, professing his love and admiration for me. His advances became increasingly aggressive, and he would often show up at my workplace uninvited, claiming that he was in the neighborhood and wanted to surprise me. Each encounter left me feeling deeply uncomfortable and violated. Terrified and unsure of how to handle the situation, I reached out to the local authorities and reported David's behavior. The investigation revealed a chilling truth. He had a history of stalking and harassment with multiple victims who had experienced similar distressing encounters. David was arrested and a restraining order was issued against him. However, the psychological trauma of being stalked by a colleague lingered long after he had been apprehended. Sinister turn. It was a chilly October evening, and I was cozied up on my couch, scrolling through my Facebook feed. As I swiped past cute cat videos and friends' vacation photos, I noticed something strange. A new friend request from someone I didn't recognize had appeared on my profile. The name was a jumble of random letters and numbers, and their profile picture was just a black silhouette. Curiosity got the better of me, and I clicked on the mysterious request. There was no information on the profile except for a single post that had been made just minutes ago. It read, I know what you did last summer. I thought it must be some sort of prank or a friend messing with me. So I decided to accept the request and send a joking message back. Minutes turned into hours as I delved deeper into the mystery. The person on the other end started sending me creepy messages each one more unsettling than the last. They seemed to know intimate details about my life, things I had never shared on Facebook or with anyone online. Panic began to set in as I realized that this wasn't a joke. I decided to block the account, hoping that would put an end to the bizarre messages. But that's when things took a sinister turn. Late one night, I heard a faint tapping on my window and when I cautiously approached, I saw a shadowy figure lurking outside. My heart raced as I realized that I was being watched. The unsettling messages continued, and the stalker's knowledge of my personal life only grew. I couldn't escape the feeling of being constantly monitored. I contacted the authorities, but they struggled to trace the origin of the messages as the account appeared to be a complex web of anonymity. The fear and paranoia consumed me, affecting my daily life and well-being. I couldn't help but wonder who this mysterious stalker was and what they wanted from me. It was a chilling reminder that the internet could be a breeding ground for dangerous individuals who could infiltrate one's personal life. 
blurring the lines between safety and vulnerability. The chilling turn took an even darker twist. The blocked account began to send me messages from different profiles, each one more sinister than the last. They would reference specific moments from my past, secrets that only a handful of people knew. How could this stranger possibly know these things? My heart raced as I started receiving messages from my closest friends and family, all sharing screenshots of messages. They time passed, and I lived in constant fear, wondering if the torment would ever end. Eventually, the messages and emails stopped, and I cautiously began to rebuild my online presence. But I couldn't shake the feeling that the horror would return at any moment, and I would once again be at the mercy of the unknown entity that had haunted my Facebook account. To this day, I can't be sure who or what was behind the torment. The experience left me scarred and wary of the seemingly harmless world of social media. Facebook will never be the same for me. As the memory of that chilling online nightmare continues to haunt my thoughts and dreams, the boundaries between the digital and the real had blurred, leaving me with a sense of vulnerability that lingers. It was a stark reminder that even in the age of connectivity, Darkness can lurk in the most unexpected corners of the virtual world. The scars from that ordeal serve as a constant reminder to be cautious and vigilant in the ever-evolving landscape of online interactions. In conclusion, the harrowing experience that unfolded within the confines of the digital realm serves as a stark reminder of the potential dangers lurking behind the screens we interact with daily. The boundaries between the real and the virtual have blurred in ways we couldn't have imagined. And the scars left by that haunting online nightmare remain etched in my memory. As I cautiously move forward, I am reminded to exercise vigilance and caution in the ever-evolving world of online interactions. The seemingly harmless world of social media can indeed hold unforeseen threats, but it also highlights the importance of cybersecurity and the need for a supportive network to help weather the storms of the digital age. The chilling memories of that experience will forever alter the way I navigate the digital landscape a lasting testament to the resilience of the human spirit and the indomitable will to emerge from the darkest of online nightmares.